Hello? Yep. We're live. Hold on. guy fail and he gets up and it falls on his head <laughs> all right here's a video by mr. Rob West What's up, every Oop, hold on a second. There we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the VR, the bar here on VRS. I am your host, John Carmine, aka Mini. I am a United States Marine Corps veteran, 2311 was my MOS. I am an OG of the Veteran Radio Syndicate, card carrying, mer card carrying member of the E4 Mafia, and a proud father of a bouncing baby boy. Um,. Joining me tonight is Mr. George Pardos. He is the HMFIC of VRS, a United States Marine Corps veteran as well. 
a he wrestled at the Ohio State University. He's also a proud papa of two wonderful kids. And he's a small business owner, so he works himself like a red mule pretty much most of the time. Also joining me is Mr. Chris Cornell, a.k.a. the Blue Falcon. Give me that call, Chris. Talk to everybody. There you go, man. There you go. Chris is a United States Army veteran who went downrange as a Blue Falcon, a.k.a. Uh, military police. He is a proud father of several children. He likes to climb long, hard poles for a living, and puking in my sink is one of his favorite pastimes as well. He also has a daughter about to join our tribe pretty soon, actually, isn't it? Uh, less than a month now. Right on, right on. Getting a little nervous. I mean, it is Air Force boot camp, so it's kind of like summer camp, but... Yeah, see, the other day we were driving the car, and she's, and I just, I love these these kids that have never been to, to boot camp or whatever. They all of a sudden think they're schools or airmen. I'm going to be like, you are absolutely nothing until you graduate, kid. Yep. But I guess they also talk with each other. She's like, I heard that first it was the Marine Corps basic that was the roughest, and then it was the Air Force, and then it was the Army. And I just, just kind of giggled. I'm like, all right, kid. I don't know. Talk to me in a couple months. Let's just let's get to this Air Force. Yeah, what do they do? Like six weeks? Uh, something like that. Yeah, I think I've heard they buy singles. I have no idea. It's not very long. I know that. It's, I think it's the yeah. shortest, shortest out of all of them. Right on. Yeah, right of course. On. It, yeah, some of ours is OSIP, though. Like in the Army, it's basic, and then your career and everything all combined. I don't know. They're all different, and they change every few years. Gotcha, gotcha. Mr. Pardos, what's new? What's happening? Not much, man. Just working like a uh, rented mule. And, you know, this is our busy time of the year is the uh, summer season. So it is, you know, days like this that uh, I'm glad that I work with by myself and not uh, for other people. And you know what? I got to tell you something. This is a, you know, the people that are listening – um, what the thing is scaring me about our economy right now, and I, I normally don't worry, but in the next few years, it's going to be even scarier. The, the amount of declining small business ownership, and it's at an all time low, and that is not a good uh, that is not a good sign. Uh, you know, we need to have more veterans open up their own companies. We need to have more veterans open up their, you know, their own shop, um, get out there, do, you know, do something for yourself because you're never going to be able to make enough money working for the man. Yeah, one of these days we're going to get together because I had an idea. I'm not going to be able to do tree work forever. My body's probably going to break down in the next five to eight years completely. Um, I'm just guessing. I mean, uh, it's pretty brutal work. I mean, it's just like, you know, I mean, fucking, I got these covered all over me. <laughs> um, but one of the things I like to do, and I get to do it uh, often, my boss, because uh, nobody likes to do it, and I like to do it, is stump grinding, okay? When after you cut the tree and you remove everything, you got to grind that stump out. And uh, I love doing it. I, I just dig it. I just zone out running this machine, just tearing this thing out. I just zone out and do the cleanup and on my way. And, you got a little uh, remote control with it? And, no, it, uh, uh, some of them do. Some of them do, but most of them you're right up on it just working levers uh, or buttons, whatever. But uh, And those are the ones that I've used. And what I was thinking about was I like to work hard, and I'm pretty sure I'd work pretty damn hard for myself um, is to put together a business plan and get a loan to buy a truck a good trailer and a decent used stump grinder and basically I'd still be working for the company I'm working for now but I'd be allowed to, to you know be subbed out to other tree services to grind their stumps as well and you know what you for like for like a three inch pine that's like a hundred bucks it takes you 30 minutes and then the cleanup, as long as you do the setup correctly and you put some boards up and bearish, you're not shooting tree grindings 40 feet. Um, 
the cleanup is, you know, eh, it's hard work, but it's it's not that hard. Um, so I, I mentioned that to my wife, and she's like, that is the best fucking idea you've ever had. <laughs> she's like, you should, you, know, talk, that's you should talk to George and put together a business plan so in a few years you can you can put that together and, and you can go work for yourself and you know, possibly I, I hire other people. What's up, Chris? You know what I found fascinating in, uh, in tree work? Well, it's not exactly tree work, but like lumberjacks or, uh, or loggers we have in my area. To be able to come in and, and be able to value a tree, I, that absolutely amazes me. And how much like a walnut or something will go for? I, uh, that shit fascinates me. I mean, I had some walnut trees that they were... I mean, and, and to be able to price that shit... Uh, Oh, I, I I haven't been doing it that long, and I can I can I can look at a tree and come probably within two hundred dollars of an estimate on how it's how much it's going to cost to get it taken out. I mean, oh, I'm talking about how much to sell it for. Oh the, yeah, oh, I don't know that, but my boss does because some of the stuff that we do cut down that's really quality, like it's a it's an alive tree, which sucks um, when you have to take those out, but um, it's in good condition. He'll take it. He'll sell it. And, and sell it to a mill, and you know a, a nice sized trunk from like oak, you know, nine hundred bucks, boom, right there. And you got paid to take it out, so it's money on top of money. So yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I had my woods logged a while. Uh, I guess several years back, I had loggers come in. It was just interesting how they priced the pressures. Yeah, buddy. Did you uh, did you happen to catch the video I played at the beginning of the uh, show? I did not. I'm not sure enough to uh, to press my bandwidth too much when we're doing this. Um, it was uh, <laughs> so a couple of guys taking out a tree, and uh, they weren't they weren't. I can tell you right now, they weren't using a pulley block or or anything like that. It was just. Uh, a bowling, a bowling knot on on the top of this tree, and the guy topped it, cut it, and it went down, and the groundy holding onto the rope was supposed to be pulling it over. Well, the tree pulled him over and pulled him about probably 25 feet in the air and probably about 50 feet through the air <laughs> till he wrapped yeah. himself around the tree, fell down, and oh. then as he got up, this guy gets up as he's getting up. The tree breaks uh, breaks off of um, it, it falls off of where it's pressed up against the trunk and hits him in the fucking head. <laughs> it's, I mean, he goes Superman. Watch the beginning of the show when you get a chance. He just goes flying. It is hilarious. Thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Our special guest Rob West will be uh, with us in just about 15 minutes. Rob West is a country western singer, a golfing extraordinaire guru pro if you if you will uh he's also a veteran advocate and president of the luke bryant luke bryant must die charity foundation <laughs> which if you, is that uh if is, you, is luke bryant his favorite country uh female singer um uh, well i'll let you ask him that and it, the response is gonna be pretty funny uh i want to see what's up with everybody here thomas brickner checked in ryan dix once i went to high school with. what's up ryan uh, Dwayne Wireman, Carl Loomis, hey, Thomas Brickner, what's up, man? John Whitdorf, uh, Richie the Redneck Pip King is watching, Mr. Josh Miller is watching, Justin Kinney's in there, what's up, J-Dub? How you doing, brother? Make sure you check out, uh, you know what, I'll just go ahead and do the lineup now, and hopefully I don't forget anybody's show. Uh, Monday nights, Threat Camp 5 Radio with Bulldog and Judy at 1900 Eastern Standard Time. Tuesdays at 1800 Eastern Standard Time is a Woe Radio Show with the, the aforementioned Richie the Redneck Pimp King and the golden voice of VRS Justin Snodgrass. Following that is uh, Fan Vets with Miss Kateri and Mr. Recope. They had a great show last night. It was pretty fun. Uh, I got to catch quite a bit of it. So make sure you go back over to VRS main page and uh, seek out that video and uh, give, it a, give it a like and a share. Wednesdays, of course, is The Bar at 2000 Eastern Standard Time. Thursday is The Warrior Wall with our very own Mr. George Pardos. Friday, we are kind of open, but not. We have, we have, we've kind of gone back to our roots a little bit. Uh, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Uh, 
uh, Justin Kenny from Backwoods Veterans. He does a, a radio show, and the name escapes me. I, I want to say Fence Line. Um, Friday nights, and I usually post uh, about 2300 Eastern Standard Time. Um, good fun, good music. Actually, you can play music without getting in trouble. Uh, thank you, Facebook. Um, and just lots of banter and joking around and breaking balls. Um, Saturday is it's 1800 or 1700 somewhere at 1800 Eastern Standard Time with Ethan and his crew. And then you got Super Sunday kicked off by Justice Snodgrass, the golden voice of VRS, with his radio show, um, Spearhead Shenanigans. Um, and that, I believe, is at 1300 Eastern Standard Time. And it is truly Super Sunday because you get that show. And then at 1900 Eastern Standard Time, you have uh, <clears throat> Sports Church with myself, uh, Mr. Terrell, Pook, and Pops. Then following that immediately is Mr. George Pardos with the Bear News. And he had a very good show Sunday. I don't know if you if you saw me checking in on that, but uh, it was a really good show. I enjoyed it. My wife enjoyed it. And then immediately following that is one of my favorite shows. Uh, I've been honored to be a guest co-host and to... Uh, uh, guest host Backwoods Veterans and they come on at 2300 Eastern Standard Time and they have the outdoor segments shenanigans what else do they have in their segment signs and headlines uh, so you got J-Dub there he's the host Sexy Girlfriend and Jonathan Toll are his co-hosts and then following that is uh, the high tech redneck the man behind the, the man behind the mic um, Mr. Josh Kasher so thanks everybody for tuning in. Ross Golden, what's up? Ryan Dix, what's going on, man? How you doing, brother? It's been a minute. It's probably been about Wow, I'm getting old. Let's do the math here. 20 24, 25 years since I've seen him in person. So that's pretty crazy. Thanks for tuning in, man. Uh Justin Kinney, thanks, man. Uh you guys shared it out. <laughs> Ross Golden, did Pardos dye his beard? Um no. 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 That's just his no. glorious <laughs> greatness in the city. <laughs> his glorious greatness. I love it. I think it's time for another shot as we get ready for uh, Mr. Um, Rob West. Should be calling in here shortly. Just a heads up. Can I? Hey, we don't know can how, I tell, I hold on. We don't know how this is going to go. I may have to hang up on all these guys. Um, when I accept his call, I might put it on hold. And you guys will have to either jump off. End the call, and then I'll I'll add I'll add you back on. I think that's what's gonna happen. Go ahead, Mr. Pardos. All right. So whoever this kid is, I, I'm gonna buy him a scotch, and I, I want to share this story because this is the best. This is a funny story I've heard all week. This kid in Kansas City put his school on Craigslist for sale, and and it, it, it was. It's Truman High School, and he put it in on, on for, um, and he listed it for twelve thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you, this is pretty. Well, this is pretty funny, and his, his name is. Yeah, he he put his high school. His name is <laughs> Kylan Shiel, and and, and I, I'm just telling you, man, this is the funniest shit I heard. Oh, I mean, back in our day. You know, when we when we prank, I mean, what what we had it back in my day, which is by the way, I graduated high school thirty five years ago yesterday. Um, all we had, you know, the only pranks we had hmm. were pulling the fire alarm. That's it. That's all. The, that's all we had. Uh, that was now they put in stuff on Craigslist. You know, they're giving the principal's home number for, you know, uh, on uh, Tinder. I mean, they're just uh, or on Grinder. I mean, the shit that they're doing today. And it, it's just funny, but I'll give him the, you know, I'll give him this, uh, I'll give him credit on this. I'm doing a shot for that gentleman for putting his school on Craigslist. That is awesome. I have to ask so, Ryan Dix, who we went to the same high school back there in uh, Milwaukee. Um, do you remember, Ryan, if you're still listening, I hope you are. Do you remember any of the crazy pranks that were pulled off? I mean, besides the senior party, at, like towards the last couple of days of school, I, I I seem to remember like something with a pig. I remember something with a, somebody releasing a bunch of birds 
in the high school of our one of our rival high schools. I think it was Whitnell. I think there were the Falcons. I think somebody released a bunch of birds into the high school. <laughs> it took them like weeks to catch them down. I don't know. That just pops in my head. It may or may not have happened. Um, oh, boy. Doo-doo. By the way, I got to tell you something. This is something else that kind of that I this was um, um, one of the issues that I saw today is that, you know, during the Parkland shooting in Florida, um, you know, the, the one sheriff was just convicted of standing idly by. And, you know, basically he was convicted of dereliction of duty. Yeah. So, you know, this is one of the reasons why I think the gun debate keeps on go- happening because, you know, you have um, situations like this. A guy, think about it, an officer of the law stood idly by while his fellow citizens are getting shot. I, I You know, I can't comprehend the, the, the cowardice of this. I, I, I mean, and, and, I can't, I, you, I, know, I, uh, you know, I, at first I thought, well, maybe he was told to stand down and not go in. Uh, but like, you you hear active shots. You you hear fire going. Like you were supposed to run to that, not just stand there. And I, you know, I, I'm not that guy. I wasn't there. I, but I I have to believe that any one of us and anybody listening, tune into the bar. And thank you all for tuning in. Please share us out. Um, would run to that, especially with, with children. I mean, I think a very common thread, even if it's a pro vet or a dickhead vet or what or a, a super vet or just Regular vets like me, you, Chris, and Katiri, um, and Lunchbox, and, and whatnot, is uh, we're very protective. We have a very protective instinct in us. And mine is on, like, ninja level right now because I, I have a son, which I never thought was going to happen. Uh, so I am very protective of him. Like, if, if you see me at the, at the ball game and Michelle's holding him and, 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 and she's kind of – he's getting a little wiggly. I'm like, would you please just – you know – She's like, would you stop being a pussy? But getting back to the original story, uh, sorry, people, that's just how my brain works. I just go and follow it sometimes. But yeah, that Parkland cop, I, I don't, I don't get it. I, I really don't. I mean, I, 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 well, he's obviously a line of work. I, well, yeah, yeah obviously. You know, and it's funny. I did the 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 tree that I took out today this massive oak i didn't just do it and of course you know we had a crane operator and and uh max and john my boss who was climbing um it was for a cop and i knew right away i i, I walked up to him as soon as i saw him come out of his house and uh when i got a chance to talk to him i said hey are you prior military just to, by the way he walked the way he was with his wife and his kids he just had this presence shoulders back head up very deliberate walk and I'm like, he's got to be prior military or he's a police officer. He, he's got to be. He's just got that look about him. So I walked up to him and asked him, and sure enough. And I have no doubt that dude would have run in there and smoked that uh, Parkland shooter. No doubt. Like, I just, I could just tell. I just looked at him. like, yeah, this guy's, you know, he's reluctant. How do I say it? He, he's a little reluctant in the job. He says, man, if I would have known it was going to be like this, I probably wouldn't have done it for so long. But I got so much time in. It's just what I do now, and I'm going to retire, and, and uh, he said, hell, maybe I'll come work for you guys and work with you guys. I'm like, that's hilarious, but really nice guy, but you could tell. It's kind of like, I was talking about the, the teddy bear effect, that some of the baddest dudes are some of the uh, nicest, calmest people. I know Pardos can literally squish people's heads. He's a big fucking teddy bear. Don't let him fool you. I met some operators that are just, just a uh, Chris... Uh, uh, Tonto and and uh, Boone, Daniel Boone Color. When I ran into those guys at Ready Line up here in Cincinnati, Ready Line Shooting Complex, Boone was like the sweetest person in the world to my wife. My wife was very pregnant at the time. She didn't want her picture taken, and he literally went and grabbed her and said, "Come on, you're getting in this picture with us. Come on." And it was just so nice. And shit, those guys could have took off, and they sent bullshit with me for half an hour. Me and my wife for half an hour. They were just doing an appearance, and I was the last one there. Um, I just barely made it, and they just they hung out there, the nicest guys. So I actually first time I actually saw a picture of this Parkland cop um, was today, and I looked at it and I went, "Yep, kind of makes sense. 
he kind of looks like a big fucking pussy. He just did. I mean, optics aren't everything, but they're a good start sometimes. I mean, what do you think, George? I mean, what do you think? I mean, this guy's never getting another job in law enforcement. He's never. He's going to. No, no, no. He's going to jail. Oh, well, that's good. Good. For how long? Two years? I don't know. It's um, he's going to the jail for a while. But I mean, here, here's the thing. Um, and the the problem is with it. You know, everybody wants to stop. You know, and, and, and this is my you know this is my issue with this, with the whole debate, the gun debate. You want to take guns away from people? Say, oh, only the police should have guns. Well, the fucking police let pe- kids get slaughtered. I don't get, I, I'm going to tell you this. I, if I was in that situation, there is no way, no way I would sit idly by and let kids get shot. No, there, there's just no way. No. And you're going to tell me that you want me to now, um, uh, you want me now to, to, to sit there and um, entrust you with gun control? Are you fucking out of your mind? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. seriously. And, you know, here's the other thing, too. Um, what I find funny is that now with the guy that, you know, in Virginia, the Virginia shooter that was, you know, that they used a silencer, um, how they're going to wind up, uh, you know, now, you know, you know, Trump is talking about maybe banning silencers, which is, again... I, you know, it's a knee-jerk reaction, to, you know, like the bump stock. But I, I'm just telling you what I find even interesting, more interesting than that, is the fact that um, that all of uh, um, they were talking about passing the Safe Act or the you know the National Silencer Act, and this happens this the same month. Yeah. I just find that too coincidental. Little little and, tin, little tin foil, but yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I totally feel you. I, I, I uh, yeah. Um, and oh God, don't get me on the debate. People silence, oh, silence or suppressor, or whatever. Fine. Um, because I, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. But some people will come back and say it's a uh, silence or suppressor, and then I always come back. Well, then come to my gun range, mine, the gun range I go to. I don't own it be nice if I did um um but uh yeah there's a um I can't remember the manufacturer but they have a uh display case with uh the suppressors silencers whatever you want to call them but it says it says silencers on it so yeah um all right guys I'm gonna kill the call I'm gonna answer Rob and then I'm gonna add you back on okay all right Mr. Rob West, what's going on, brother? What's shaking, man? What's going on with y'all? Oh, I just had to, I had to uh, cut off my co-host here, so I got to call them back real quick. Because um, I couldn't answer your call without putting them on hold, so I just killed their call. Um, oh, what the shit just happened? Oh, that's great. Skype just closed because it got confused. Shiza. All right, let's see if we can start this back up. Um, all right, Mr. Rob West, uh, Dean Cerny, I will do a shot again for you in just a second. I have got to um, <clears throat> have Rob call me back. And then I'll add my co-host back in. Skype just up and said, no, not going to happen. We're going to crash you. Lisa didn't crash the whole show. Unfortunately, you have to listen to me. There he is. All right, all right, Mission Rob West. Welcome to what the, the bar. Heck? Welcome, welcome back, back to the bar. Let me, uh, let, Shit, me add, yeah. let me add my co-host in here. Oh my God, it keeps on freaking doing this. I don't understand what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. I really, really don't. Um, let me see if I can figure something out real quick. Um, I apologize, and a lot of people uh, are probably getting a little frustrated with me right now, but that, that that's okay. Um, I'm going to try and call 
send a number. Because we need to get this going. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Like, I don't know what's going on, man. Every time I try and add these guys, um, <laughs> it, it, it kills. So I'm trying to figure it out. Um, let me write down your number real quick. See if I can... Uh, if if this happens again, it. I call you back. I apologize. It's been like two years no since I've had to do this. So let me see if I can get uh, George in here first. There we go. All right. George, add. Nope. It killed it again. Unbelievable. I am so sorry, guys. I do not know what the hell is going on. Um... So this is what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to open up Skype again, and I'm going to call. I'm going to try and call. Get these guys on, and then call. Um, let's see here. Get George on. Let's see. Boom. Ring the group. See if this happens. I, I apologize, guys. I really do. Um... <clears throat> All right. I not sure how I'm going to do this. Um I've got to get him on this call. Um Let's see here. Let's see if this comes up. Um And that is not, is, that's not working. Okay. Um, What's going on? Every time that Rob calls, I have to hang up on you guys. And then when I answer his call and I try and add you guys, Skype crashes on me. So I'm trying to think of a well, way. Well, just take his call, just take his call and, and deal with him for the time being. All right? Um, I tell you what, um, that might be an option. I'm trying to think of another, um, another way to do this. Oh, you know what? It is going to crash because you don't have. Is he calling you on Skype or is he calling you in a call-in number? He's calling me on a call-in number. Uh, that might be. So, yeah, it's going to be. You're going to have to add people to call, and and that's not going to. That's going to hang up. Take his call, and then we can add in later. All right. Um. Yeah, try and call me. Try and call me and see, uh, and we'll see what happens, and we'll we'll just text back and forth. All right, Rob, we're still trying to figure Yo. this shit out, man. But um, I apologize for technical difficulties. You know, it's been a minute since I've <coughs> had a call in, and somebody actually call in. So one of these days, um, do you have a smartphone, <laughs> man? Do you have a smartphone? Or are you still yeah. a flip phone guy? No, I got a smartphone. Yeah, fuck. you need you need to get Skype on that, and then the probably can't do it tonight. But the next time you come on the show, you'll just Skype in on from your phone. Okay. That okay. that 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 would probably make because every time I try and add these guys back in, they um, it kills the call. But uh, hey, what's going on, man? You want me to go download it? Right? I can download it right now. I mean, I'm not yeah, that stupid. Well, I'm kind of fucking stupid. But. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Um, but yeah, go ahead, download and see if uh, see if you can uh, hook that up so we can get these guys back on. But man, it's been a minute, dude, and you're one of my favorite I peeps. Uh, what the hell's been going on? Which I mean, I know you're uh, a busy dude. I, I follow you on Facebook, of course. We're friends on Facebook. I think we're friends in real life too. We're not just Facebook friends. But you've been right. super busy. And um, can I ask you to do just one thing though? Yeah. Stop posting about your hole in ones. <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. Look, man. You're killing me, Smalls. Dude, I'm so lucky. It's ridiculous. I don't even play anymore, but somehow the some bitch goes in the hole. So. <laughs> Just it's all luck. It's um. So I mean, yeah. Let's let's catch up a little bit. It's been about what about a year since we've talked uh, oh, on, on on air. Probably, yeah. I mean. I, I spent like probably a hundred days on the road last year and was just busy. And then we started working on the album last uh, summer and finished it up this, well, let's see, 2000, December, January of this year, we finished it up and 
released it May 17th, so it's out there now, and seven years in the making, brother, finally. Right? That's awesome, man. I mean, you know, I played, uh, um, I don't know where you did this, but I, it was uh, one of the videos that popped up on YouTube was Lazy Rainy Sundays. Very well done, sir. There's a very, very nice chopper in front of the uh, front of the stage. Oh, right. yeah, man. I, You know, I live to do uh, veteran events, and one of the songs on the album was really based about um, my experience with uh, with you boys and, and PTSD. Drink and Quiet is the last track on the album. It's all about what you guys go through and the voices and the, the struggle. And, you know, I've gone through some of that personally myself, so uh, I dedicated that song to y'all. Oh, and I'm proud nice. of this thing. It's been, it's been a hell of a freaking labor of love, that's for sure. Oh man, you got a great voice. You got a great presence. Uh, you were awesome in rally at uh, Grunt Fest Four. Um, you know, I'm sorry again for my friend Monster molesting you in the shark outfit, but you know, <laughs> shit happens. You I know. deserve it. Well, you know, you get a few shots in that kid, and he just goes crazy. And uh, yeah, it was always my job to watch him at these events. Um, and uh, yeah, I failed like every single time. Um, I got a lot of good handlers myself now, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've been busy, did over 100, uh, 100 uh, gigs last year. How many albums yeah. have, let, let's go into the, um, let's go into the, um, to the new album. What's the title? What's the kind of driving force behind it? What's it all about? So we named the album Arizona, and it's getting back to my roots as a fifth generation native to Arizona. We kind of we're growing this thing from from a grassroots type of thing, man. From here out, I recorded it all in Nashville. Um, recorded it with some of the best ever, Jim Moose Brown, who plays with Bob Seger and has produced so many albums and so many people nice. out of Nashville. Wow. Did all the music and then co-written uh, with Ira Dean, Chris Wallen. And my buddy Gary Allen, he gave me two songs for the album. And then a couple others that I wrote myself. But it was, uh, we held on to this thing for a while before music started to change a little bit. You know, the bro country thing's kind of on its way out. Oh, by the way, so, if you, if, when you watch this video, uh, watch the show later, um, mm -hmm. you're, you're probably going to get a little mad at me. Because um, why? I put um, your favorite person. Uh, as your picture, because you're not actually Skyped oh, with us yet. Douche Bryant. <laughs> I got it. it's a picture uh, of him with his hat, with his with his hat turned backwards, his his hands behind his head and thrusting his shit. And I'm like, I got to put this up there just uh, so Rob sees it and bro. just gets pissed off. <laughs> no, I, I won't get pissed. I love you for that, but <laughs> he is still a Gomer pile of country music. So. Oh God, is he ever? Is he ever? You know, I I used to like you know he did the uh, um drink a beer. I was like, ah, oh, that's not bad. And then somebody's like, hey, listen. To, no, it might have been you. Listen to Chris Stapleton's version. And I'm like, okay. Exactly. And I did. I'm like, oh. He wrote shit. the son of a bitch, and he's that's the that's the one I cover. I don't cover the Luke Bryan version. I cover the Stapleton version. Because I'd kick my own ass if I had to cover Luke Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, 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 let's I want to try and stick with with the album. What's the title? Arizona. Rob and West Arizona Rob is the name West, of the album. Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Where, yeah. Where it's basic it... it's just it's all about Arizona, man. And there's some songs that are a beautiful down for it kind of gives a whole it's like a it's a lullaby, not a lullaby but a a ballad but it talks about uh, some of the scenery in Arizona and it references a lot of that shit. So. Which is, I mean, you're a very lucky man. That is a beautiful state. People are like, I don't like the desert. Well, it's not all desert. There's, you know, you go Yeah, I'm flag. not from the desert. I'm from northern Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, uh, by Flagstaff, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm from Prescott, so I grew up in the pine trees. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it snowed where I'm from. And right, up there by the, uh, right up there by the Grand Canyon? Right the yeah, it, about, about an hour away from it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's beautiful country. I mean, you got the painted desert, um, and and I love the desert, man. I don't know why people like, oh, it's so. Ugh. I love it. One, no humidity. Two, no bugs. Three, no pollen. Exactly. Whatsoever. I went to my buddy's um, 
actually, it was, it was the weekend my son was conceived. Um, I went to one of my best friends in the Marine Corps. Uh, his 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 marriage out in Desert Hot Springs, California, right next to Twenty Nine Palms, and I'm in a wool oh, yeah. suit, a really expensive wool suit. Not really expensive, but expensive wool suit. It's ninety two degrees outside. I'm not sweating at all. Yeah, because there's no freaking humidity. Yeah. It was beautiful. I love yeah, it. People and don't it, get it. They think, oh, my God, it's so hot. Well, yeah, it's hot as balls. But listen, man, as long as you're not dripping wet, it's fine. Yeah. And yeah. Besides, as long as you got a few cocktails, you're good anyway. Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Speaking man. of that, I'm tipping him back right now at my favorite bar here in Arizona. Where, where are you at? Where are you, where are you at and where are you drinking? I'm at uh, Charlie's Sports Grill, which is where I uh, my good friends own this place, and it's kind of like home for me. There you go. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm tipping back Coronas right now. Oh, see, yeah. Because it's summertime. Yep, yep. I've been, I've been, uh, I'm uh, drinking a little Hornitos uh, tequila. And, uh, Orale. Yeah, and, uh, and well, I ran out of Coronas because uh, me and the wife got a little bit of a spat last night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I call that every day of the week. Uh, it, <laughs> our fights are great because they're, they're furious and fast. And so they're over in like There's nothing 15 wrong minutes, with that. and then it's the rest of the time. That's is... how I have sex, bro. Furious and fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. But the, it, so we ended up st uh, staying up all night because I thought I was gonna get rained out today. I didn't think I was gonna have to do any tree work, and yeah. uh, it turned out not so much. So I went to work with a glorious hangover. Um, but uh, you know, that's how it goes. Amen. Amen to that. Um, all right. I, so, I haven't had a hangover in like 30 years because I haven't been sober. So <laughs> you fucking kill me, dude. Oh, I God. stopped drinking one time for uh, 16 years, and then I turned 17. <laughs> there you go. See, see. I mean, geez. I remember. I I think the first time I had a beer was probably 12. And uh, you yeah, know, I'm Irish Catholic, and and well, half I'm half Irish Catholic, half German Catholic, so quite a bit of drinking going on in that family. And you know, you know, there's always yeah. that one uncle who goes, "Here, boy, try this." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You guys, uh, you guys brought communion to a whole new level. <laughs> oh my gosh! Dude, speaking of that, my son's gonna be baptized in 18 days. 18 days. Hey, congrats on that, by the way. Oh, Greatest thing you. I ever did in this world was become a father, so congrats. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I, I never thought it was ever going to happen because uh, it wasn't for lack of trying. Let's be honest. I've been married, <laughs> I've been married twice before. The first one went crazy. The second one went and freaking died on me, and, and then I found Michelle, my current wife. And, yeah. Uh, and, uh, Third one's a charm, brother. Yeah, the, the, there was the talk when things got serious. I'm like, hey, look, I've, I've never had kids. Um, are you okay with adopting? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, awesome. I'm going to marry you. <laughs> I told her right there, I'm going to marry you. That's that's the best answer you could have ever give. Uh, but James is, uh, I, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, Robin. You'll probably back me up. The first two weeks, didn't really care for him too much. No, I didn't like mine until they were old enough to tell me what the fuck they wanted. So. <laughs> yeah, I didn't talk to them for about five years. But after that, I was like, "All right, now, I, now I can, I can jam with y'all. Tell me what you want, and I got you." Um, let's see here. Uh, Bradley Jackson just chimed in. He says, "Can I join you at Charlie's? I'm in Glendale." Well, head yeah, on come over. on, head on over there. Um, why wouldn't you? Yeah, hell yeah. Meet the one and only Rob West. Probably get you in a lot of trouble. I'm guessing, maybe, possibly, allegedly. Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> do you got Skype downloaded yet? No. You want me to do it now, or? Yeah, try and try and do it now. Try and do it. Try and do it simultaneously. You should be able to. Smartphones are amazing Hold these on. days. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can figure this shit out. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Justin Kenny's still they're in there. He's in there talking, talking some smack. Josh Kaser, Ross Golden. Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, I did see this. Where was it? Um, oh, I forgot it. Dakota Potter is in the chat. Um, uh, he's under a pseudonym. Um, because of a uh, unwanted friend request, but I can't <laughs> remember his 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 fake name. But um, 
Yeah, uh, Roxanne, hey, one of my favorite chicas in the whole world. One of these days we're going to have to meet one of my favorite online gal pals. She's awesome. She shares the show out and she always, uh, she's always a big fan, a big supporter of not only Veteran Radio Syndicate, but the bar and several other shows. So we adore her. Uh, it's a Terrell says, especially in Wisconsin, we baptize kids in beer here. I freaking agree. <laughs> I agree. If you ever hear, see, I grew up in Wisconsin. I spent a lot of time in Mississippi during the summers because I was a growing teenage boy and uh, I was eating my mom out of house and home. But, um, like, Wisconsin, like, seriously takes drinking to a whole new level. So when you get a chance, after the show, after the show, Google Lewis Black drinking in Wisconsin. It is one of the funniest bits you will ever hear in your entire life. I mean, we seriously do take it to a whole new level. I was drinking in bars legally in Wisconsin at 16 years old, as long as I was with a guardian. Okay. Yeah, playing pool and darts with my stepfather, and 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 awesome. hustling pool. Uh, you know, he was a post. He was he uh, he actually did the same job I did in the in. The, the Marine Corps, except he was in the Army and he was in Vietnam. Um, and uh, the stories he told, like I tell and like I ask anybody to tell, I only, I only want to hear the funny stories. So he told me a lot of funny stories. But yeah, he would take me along and we would hustle at pool in teams. He taught me really? how to play. Yeah, he taught me how to play. And uh, I got, you know, pretty decent, I guess. I don't know if you want to call it good, but he was nasty. And we would literally go to bars and hustle. <laughs> and I would drink beer. And mom was okay with that. Which was weird. Weird, 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 weird. Um, let's see here. Dwayne Wireman, he's checking in as well. Um, Bradley Jackson. Uh, hey, man, get in there. Get in there. Get over Get over to Charlie's, man. Get over there to see Rob West. Hang out. Pop, maybe, shit, maybe you can pop on the show with us. Who knows? Um, yeah, as soon as Rob gets Skype downloaded and gets an account, you're going to have to send me a uh, Skype request, a Skype contact request, and then we can get the rest of my co-hosts in here because I know they're, they're sitting chomping at the bit trying to get in because uh, both of them have met you. You may not remember them. Uh, Chris Cornell was with me at uh, Grunt Fest 4 as well as uh, Mr. George Pardos. He's kind of hard to yeah. miss. He's, uh, you know, a six foot three, 265 pound Greek man. So, you know, you don't, uh, those guys don't just uh, escape your memory very often. Uh, Jeffrey John Levy, he's in there. What's up? Dean Cerny came back in. Uh, All right, I just downloaded this thing. Okay. So, uh, what do I got to do here to get you? Um, send me a Skype request to uh, John Michael Cremering. J O H N Michael, you know, how to spell Michael. Cremering is C R E M E R I N G, and it should pop up. Got it. You found me. I just sent. I just sent something to you. Okay, let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, ho, ho. I accept your friend request, there, sir. And I am going to hang up on you, and then okay. I am going to Skype you back. Perfect. Cool. You got it, bro. All right, brother. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to kick this back off now that we got uh, uh, Mr. Rob West on Skype. There we go. There's the live linesman, my good friend, the Blue Falcon, the compound commander, a.k.a. Chris Cornell. How you doing? You good? You hanging? Mm -hmm. All right. I uh, ate three pieces of pizza while waiting for you. Three pieces of pizza? Sorry. Oh, uh, wow. That's, um, have fun with that tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> It'll hit you when you're climbing oh. up a pole. <laughs> <coughs> oh, shit. <coughs> I can't find his, uh, hold on a second here. Mm. There What's going he on? is. There he is. 
Now I gotta add. Okay. All right. I figured it out. All right. Hold on. 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 Do 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 do. Get that going. Um. There we go. All right. Let's get him in here. There he is. All right. I knew we could figure this shit out eventually. Woo! Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Please share us out. We now have Rob West. Technology Challenge Rob West on Skype. I am so pumped. Congratulations, brother. You joined the 21st century. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Um... What were we talking about before um, we had to, um, well, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, we were making fun of Luke Bryant. We were talking about the album. Um, where, and I, I think I'm going to ask you this, but let me ask you again. Where can people pick up the album, get it online? Where can they go and pick up? Uh... So they can get it on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, Deezer, um, Google, and then on my website, robwestmusic.com. So it's pretty much everywhere. Nice. Yeah, every market you could think of. That's awesome, man. And I will definitely be picking it up for sure. My wife is not the biggest country uh, music fan, but I'm, I'm, I'm working her into it. I said, hey, come on. You got to give and take a little bit. I had to find a way to like Doctor Who. So you have to find a way to like country music, okay? I'm, I'm telling you, though, it's not. Not that country, man. It's more rock and roll than it is country. Is it? It's got a different vibe this time. Cool. I enjoy it. I, I, I like that. I like that. That's good. Um, I want to ask you a random question. A couple of random questions. Um, we know country and rock and roll all stems from blues. Yeah. Who's your favorite blues musician of all time? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Really? Yeah. You know, I saw him in Milwaukee the night he died really he, 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 he took off in a helicopter after his concert and crashed and died and I saw Dude. him his last concert literally one of the greatest ever uh, oh if I had to if I had to pick anybody that would be the guy that uh, that really did it for me you know what you know who do you think my answer is gonna be do you have any guess you probably have no idea who I'm gonna pick do you uh, oh man I could say if, if we're going old school, Robert old Johnson. School. Ah, there you go. First one right off the bat. Yeah, right after I mean, that, Robert Johnson, Devil at the Crossroads. Yeah. Dome, you know, Chicago. Um, oh, yeah. What a great story. There's a net, uh, documentary on Netflix about him right now. Nobody um, played the freaking acoustic slide guitar better than that guy. Nobody. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. And and it just, you know, everybody after him, were, were, whether it was Muddy Waters, W.C. Howley, um bb king who i got to meet in person which was the craziest one of the craziest things uh when i was stationed at uh naval, naval air station Millington, tennessee i got to meet bb king uh ironically at bb king's um underage drunk as fuck um so that was fun but uh Amen. yeah bb is one of my favorite but robert johnson man i just i can listen to him oh all yeah day, all day long Hey, am uh, I on video or am I just on talking? Here? You're just talking right now. You have no video. Okay. How hey. do I do the video? You uh, guys want to see? Oh, wait. Here, watch this. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> oh there he is. There he is. Look at this guy. So I, I can take down that uh, um, Luke Bryant picture and I can actually, uh, you know. Yeah. I had to Look do it, this. man. I had to give you a little shit. I, had to give you I hope there's cur there's lime in that Corona. There's a lot of what? I hope there's some lime in that Corona. <laughs> Bro, fuck. Of course there is. <laughs> Hold on. It's right in the bottom uh, there. Excellent. Excellent. Floating around. Man, that was how to live. I got well, every yes. vice going right now. Yeah. I, it, if I lived on the West Coast, I'd be so screwed because... Uh, I'd be hanging out with this dude all the time. He's one of my favorite oh. peeps in the whole world. He's a good Bro, dude. Bro, we have a good time out here. Oh, yeah. And, and you do so many veteran events and play so many concerts. 
and it, it just you, you you love the community you, you've mentored I remember you telling me one time you mentored uh, veterans in, in golfing groups, trying to help them go out yeah. and, and, and have an outlet, you know, which it seems a little weird to me because golf to me is a very frustrating sport. So <laughs> frustrating. I don't understand. And, and I'm a, a lifelong baseball player. So, if you know, baseball is very it's frustrating. It's kind of the same. It's the same shit, man. You just – it's the same swing. You just turn it uh, – you just tilt your body a little different, but yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, hey, look, go- golf is another place for me to get drunk. So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There that you I understand. So it's it's either gonna be me. I, I told my wife I gotta pick up. A, I gotta pick up an, another hobby besides what I'm doing. You know, of course, with the veteran radio syndicate. Um, but it's either gonna be competitive is, shooting or golfing. Which one? My do I hobby go for? is masturbation. And I win every time. Oh, you lie. <laughs> You've got a gorgeous, gorgeous gal. You don't... Oh, bullshit. I call uh, bullshit. She's all right. Oh, God. If she listens to this, you're in deep shit. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about you, man. She's act- She's standing across the bar right now. Is she? Oh, yeah. right on, man. Um. All right. So, hey. Let's talk a little golf while you're here. You're right. you you are a tremendous golf player. Um, handicap? Well, I'm still a professional, so I'm you don't really have a, one, yeah. I don't. Know. Yeah, I mean, I I never got rid of my my status just because. Who knows? Maybe I want to tee it up one time in an event, and, and uh, it didn't matter. I just let it hang out there. Dude, if you make the U.S. Open, I'm quitting my job and flying out there. I'm just saying. Dude, if I if I made the U.S. Open, I would teabag myself. So, <laughs> literally. I would pay money for that. I would pay a do a GoFundMe page for that one. <laughs> Bro, if I could do it, I would do it. Oh, my God. I would love to By do it. By the way, I just want to let you know, Luke Bryan is my favorite female country and Western singer. <laughs> I knew I'd uh, get you, a kick out of that. There is so much truth to that statement right there. Have you ever met you know, him in I person, gotta... Rob? Oh, oh. I, no, actually, you know, so when I when I was out in Nashville doing my uh, my album, I was sitting in a meeting with some uh, some Nashville people, distribution company and whatnot, and uh, that some bitch walked in. No kidding. Um, but I was walking out as he was walking in. I didn't even recognize him because I don't give a shit. <laughs> and. Uh, they told me later, they're like, hey, man, your buddy Luke Bryan walked in. I'm like, damn, I would have told him how shitty he was if I, if I saw him. And they're like, it's a good thing you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I don't have any uh, filter. So. I, th- I think you could take him. I think you could take him. Oh, dude, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've beat up a lot of chicks in my day. I'm like two <laughs> one and one against women. <laughs> I love it. All right, so golf. Um, what'd you think about Tiger, man? Come back Dude, winning excited. the Masters. I love it. It's a great the game. It is. I mean, uh, it, it, is. it was the highest rating, uh, Sunday golf viewership in like eight years, something like that. Yeah. It's huge. And he, I was great for the game. He is. He is. Um, why is that though? I mean, it, 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 and do you well, think. Go ahead. I Why? think he appe- he appeals to a, a broad uh, spectrum of people. You know, his dad was uh, military, so mm-hmm. he grew up a military kid. He has respect for our country, respect for the military. He also appeals to um, a minority group of people that are trying to get into the game of golf. But then he's broke down just about every barrier you could ever think of. Um, and records... I mean, he's our, the only record he doesn't hold is, is major victories. And I believe that if he continues to play the way he is, then no. he might just do it. You don't think no. so, George? How many, Rob, how many no. does he have to go to break Jack's record? Five. He's, he needs five, yeah. yeah. You think he can do it if he stays healthy? I know. I believe he can. Okay. Well, George says no. I'm, okay. Says yes. All right. So well, we're gonna take a poll. I bet you. <laughs> let's say this. I'll, I'll take the over, under, in between, whatever. Um, the answer is no. I, so I know where you're, making I up. know where you're coming from, but did we ever think he was gonna win again? No. Yes. No. And look what yes. happened. I didn't think he yes. was gonna win again. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Hurt so many times. Hurt so many times. 
I mean, you know, it's taking, a, it, taking it, starting it's off. It's a different with, level. Yeah, starting off with a three wood to your head by your wife doesn't help. And then. Um, Been you, there. You know, back in. Yeah, but and, she she hit for par, though. I mean, she hit for par. She right? hit for That's par. <laughs> she hit a she hit a freaking triple eagle. She didn't make a putt in her life, and she walked away with four hundred million dollars. The fuck are you? Are you kidding me? Seriously. That was the greatest. That was the greatest shot she ever hit. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh my god! You know, it, which it, one of my daughters would do that? Well, take like, care, old dad. I, I can't remember. I can't remember the comic who said it, but he goes, "You gotta understand something, sweetheart. It's not." You versus it's you versus one of these hoes. It's you versus thousands yeah. of them. And I'm drinking and I'm partying and I'm away and shit might happen. I mean, I, I, I don't understand professional athletes getting married, period. I don't get it ever, period. Like, I don't get it. Or, I don't, or music. Why not? Because it never, well, I mean, okay. It never works out. It, it, never it works doesn't. Out. It, it implodes hugely. And you lose half your shit. Bill Burr said, hey, Kobe Bryant's, hey, wife, got, ever, Kobe Bryant's hey. wife got like $300 million. She never hit a jump shot in her life. <laughs> Kobe Bryant, they never got divorced. Well, whoever it was, one of the big basketball players got divorced. And Bill Burr said, she never hit a layup or a jump shot in her life. And she yeah. got $300 million. No, I understand. Because they're too stupid to sign a prenup. Well, there you go. That's we want true. prenup. We want prenup. <laughs> I've never yes. had to sign one because I haven't had shit. So, <laughs> if I could go back in time and have my wife sign a prenup, I would never do it because she makes more than me. So, ah, yeah. there you go. She's my sugar mama. For ah. sure. <laughs> and I get the banger, and I don't have to pay for it, which is awesome. That is awesome. Yes, you do. No, 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 no such thing. No such animal. Let me tell you. You know what my dad told me when I was 17 and I enlisted in the Marine Corps? There's sex for money and sex for free. Sex for free is always more expensive. <laughs> I love it. Bro, yes. you pay for it one way or another. Yes, you do. We, we love the ladies. We chase the ladies. and yeah. You know, I, I, I tell you what. I'm, I love the ladies because the other option is banging Chris. So, I mean, well, there's just this. And that's no fun. I don't know if that's an option, George. Chris, I don't think it would be an option up to you. I, I, I mean, if you yeah, wanted to do yeah. it, he was just going to do it. I mean, you'd fight it for a little bit. I mean, you you know, you, you would. You'd put up a little fight. And then, you know, Are you all a of predator a sudden, now, George? Dude, no, no, no. I'm not saying it's a predator, but, you know, for if, a half a billion, if, I'd let Tiger bang me for half a billion. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, half a billion. I take one for for, for half a billion. I'd kidnap you for Tiger to bang. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Besides Tiger, which um, he made a big he made a big comeback on Sunday, but you know it was it was kind of too little, too late. Who is your guy right now in professional golf, and who is? Somebody that we need to look out for. Somebody we need to start paying attention to. Well, I, uh, I'm i very fond of Jordan Spieth. Uh, all right. I really am. He's a big supporter of Veteran Golfers Association. Okay. Um, he's a good kid. He uh, He's grounded. I think he's just struggling. You know, he got married recently. So mm. it, it's a transition to go from being a single guy playing golf to being married playing golf it's different sure but i think he he really is the he really is the great hope of the future for me he's still young i mean people are writing him off already and the kid's not even 30 yet so right um i, I love what he does there uh there's a couple other kids like look at brooks kepka holy shit man i mean this dude's a machine there there's a few out there justin thomas another guy I like a lot of him yeah um but Honestly, golf is in that world right now where it's a toss-up. There, there's really nobody that's dominating the sport. I mean, it fluctuates from week to week who's winning and who's dominating. Yeah, that, that was what's so interesting that when Tiger was on his game and healthy, he was just – it was just – it was Yeah, there was – Nobody could touch him. No, yeah. and even if people were close to him, 
on Sunday, he put on that Sunday Tiger shirt, and you just walk guys. You would watch guys mentally fold. Yeah. Well, mentally he saw that fold. at the Masters too. Yes, Same exactly. Yes, it did. Yeah, it mentally fold. But oh, one of the shit, one of the Tiger's things coming. you also got to remember, you one of the things you also got to remember too, that Tiger's game changed a lot after he got hurt. So yeah. he had oh, you know yeah. one of the things that that you gotta you gotta remember is that. The Tiger of old, after he hurt his back, he was never going to be the same, you know, the same Tiger. And then right. part of the other, you know, part of the other thing that, that, that drives your swing. Now, the other, one of the other things that, that happened while Tiger was playing, and, you know, you can look at it in this manner, is that there's a lot, a lot more guys entered the golfing world. Um, where, you know, now you have a lot more players, you have a lot more tournaments, yeah. um, and guys are, and, and guys are just getting better. I mean, it, you know, it's not that they're, you know, not that the, oh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, that the, the tournaments are any worse or better, but there, there's guys that are playing earlier. Well, yeah, they he changed the entire outlook on golf and, and the way that people would were brought up in the game and the way that they trained for the game. So these kids are like three and five years old and they already have coaches now. Oh my God. I mean, nobody That's had ridiculous. that back in the day. No, Nowadays, no. He, he changed the entire world of golf because he made it, he made it an athlete's game. It's no longer a bunch of, uh, drunk guys that are fat and overweight and really ugly pants playing golf. Yeah. But John athletes. Daly, but, but you also got to remember too, that, you know, a lot of the, I'll give you a prime example. When, when they did the Buick Open, and, and Buick is was a leader in this, um, when they did the yeah. Buick Open, what Buick did, which is brilliant, they bought three hours of TV time, and then they said, listen, we're going to sell our own our own time, and you know we're going to basically um, just give out, you know, we're going to sell advertising, we're going to sell our own advertising. And once that started to happen, you had a lot more tournaments that were able to bring on more money. Right. And, that, and that's what, you know, so now, you know, 30 years ago, um, you know, and I, I've, and the reason I'm, um, I've had a chance to, you know, talk with golf is that one of my good friends is a guy from Ohio State called, his name is Chris Perry. And I've got a chance to, you know, I've had lunch with Jack Nicholas before. Those, you know, one of the things that Jack said was back in his heyday, they weren't making that much money. You know, people, no, you know, weren't. he made, you know, they also didn't get appearance fees for tournaments. That was a new dynamic in the 90s where, you know, yeah. like Davis Love and all these guys that started coming out, um, like Sonny Ballesteros. When he was playing, and he was, you know, at the top of the game for a while, um, he did not get appearance fees. Now there are tournaments that will give you hundred thousand, three hundred thousand just for showing up. Oh, dude, yeah, and, they they jerk these guys off now. Hey, let me interrupt now, real quick. Uh, Bradley Jackson wants to know. Um, can you ask Rob if he's at Charlie's on Thunderbird? No, I'm at Charlie's on Union Hills. Charlie's at Union Hills. Another thing is, um, Josh Kaiser said, don't you mean goat fund me, George? <laughs> yeah, that too. But I'm if running, you, I'm running I'll joke. trade. One of our co-hosts is missing tonight, uh, Rob uh, Miskateri. She's also a United States Army veteran um, and, and a Blue Falcon. She's a military police, and she is MIA tonight. Um, but well, she's pretty busy. Two kids, uh, college, oh, yeah. college and, and, and a regular job. I don't even know how she does it. She made it up here two weeks ago to see my son. Um, wow. and, and th that was great. But, uh, yeah, we, we miss her because, uh, she is the holder of Chris's leash. Isn't she, Chris? <laughs> uh, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, here's to her. There you go. There you go. There you go. Shit. I had I got to pour a shot for that, but, um, all right. Um, let's see. We covered a little bit of golf. Let's, do you want to do a little politics, Rob, or, or, or are you feeling frisky yeah. or what's up? Yeah. I'm not scared of shit. Let's do it. All right. Um, what's the first thought 
Uh, I'm gonna give you the first thought that pops in your head. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a couple things. AOC. Right. AOC. Uh, fucking idiot. Is she hot or not? Um. Uh, when she was bartending, I'd bang it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. There you go. Now I'd rather just cram a fucking sock in her mouth. There. Yeah, I like it. See, I like that. I like that. And I will do a shot to that. Absolutely. Amen. Um, Donald Trump. Uh, literally exactly what we needed at the time we needed it. I don't think that uh, I don't think people are really understanding what he's doing. When you're when you're a businessman um, and you do good business, the pleasantries and the fluffiness of of being a leader are far removed from that. He's he's more about taking care of the business of this country than he is pleasing people. Feels, and I don't really. He gives I don't no, give he, a, has, gives, he gives no fucks about feels, right? Yeah, and I don't give a shit about. Um, I don't give a shit about what you feel. I give a shit about whether or not our our borders are secure, whether or not my 401k is blasting out of this planet. Um, financially, where I'm at, where the housing market is at, I think about things that are real, realistic things for uh, an American citizen, not about how I feel about shit. Because guess what? Um, no, no one's ever going to agree on anybody, um, what they say or what they do. But when it comes to the business of the office, um, hundred percent on board with what he's doing with the business of the country. Yeah. I, I, I love him. I voted for him. Um, Chris voted for Gary Johnson, which I love. I, I love that, that Chris did that. Uh, I would love to see a libertarian, but I think, I think Trump had to make a choice. He had to run a Republican ticket. Otherwise, he couldn't get elected. I I don't think. I agree. I, I don't think there was any way he would have come close um, yeah. any other route. But I think he could be, you know, if if he changed his, his tone and he, he figured out a way to bring people together more than to just alienate them, he would probably be revered as one of the greatest presidents ever. Unfortunately, because he doesn't appeal to everybody with his tweeting and all that, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be lost in the mix, which sucks because he's really doing good things on a business sense. But um, when it comes to how he deals with people and talks to them, yeah, it's a little rough. He's a little short. It's kind of it's it's funny. A lot of people take shots of oh, well, he dodged the draft and he did this and he did that, and it's like okay, whatever. Uh, so did Bill Clinton. So did a lot of other people. Um, whatever. Um, I think you hit it on the head, hit the nail on the head. It was what we needed. We needed somebody to make us feel yeah, good about being Americans again. We've made yeah. mistakes. We've made horrible mistakes in the past. Um, but I've said it numerous times on the bar, name a country that has it. Like, all right, let's point oh, the finger yeah. at Britain. Oh, oh yeah. There were some sweethearts. Uh, how about the French? Oh, oh, how about the Belgians who used to cut off people's hands in the Congo to yeah. get them in line? All right. Like, yeah. let's talk about what the Chinese did during the the, 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 uh, the Great Leap Forward. And Mao basically starved, like, 25 million of his own people to death. Talk about Stalin. Yep. Let's talk about shit in Africa. I mean, come on, man. This is the greatest country on the planet. By far. By fucking far. And, uh, and people are like, oh, well, it's filled with toxic masculinity and racism uh, and this and that. And the, well, then why the uh, fuck is everybody coming here? Why is everybody I, I, trying because to come they, here? I, you know what it you is? Know, it, you know, John, it, let, let me chime in for that for a second. 90, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to say about 85% of Americans haven't even, have never left the country. They wouldn't know what, a, what another country looks like. Uh, they, they don't know the, and that you know, sucks. they don't know the way. And, and I, I posted something yesterday about, I, I just want to say, point this out in public, fuck the Royals. You know, if you're an American and you're taking the side of the Royals over Trump, I, my two words to you is fuck you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, the Royals are the worst people on the planet, bar none. They, they have a history of raping and pillaging assets 
from countries all over the world. 42 yeah. out of the 44 Commonwealth nations have had military coups. Think about that. Yeah. They've, they've exported nothing but, but racism, colonialism, and imperial hubris. And now you're sitting there as, and, and you're sitting there telling that you would rather side with the royals than the sitting president of the United States. I don't care how you feel about President Trump. Hate him, love him, yeah. but when you side with another, you know, I didn't like Obama. I didn't like George W. Bush, and I didn't like Clinton. But guess what? I would never side with one of them over a foreign leader. Absolutely. And, 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 that's, and, that, and that's the shit that pisses me off. And, you know, it's not that I think Trump is great or, you know, but the royals are jackasses. And, you know, this is what irritates me about America today is we've become so inundated with this vitriol hatred for our opposition that you're, you just turn blind. I would love somebody to go and, and, and Mogadishu is going to lose in Somalia right now. They're experiencing it is 1994 reboot all over again. They're going to lose. Two million people are going to die before the end of the year because of drought. I would love for people to see, oh, you know what? Thoughts and prayers. No, sometimes, you know what? You got to send out bad people to kill other bad people. And, yeah. and, and, you know, while, you know, while you're sitting there complaining about your chai latte from Starbucks <laughs> wasn't exactly how they, how they made it. Your thoughts and prayers don't mean shit. I, I, I'm just, no. I, 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 uh, I have I, a hard time with people. Well, I, I think this this world and this country, our country especially, has become overly sensitive to uh, to what people feel instead of what is is rational and what has common sense behind it. It's no longer about. Um, what the right thing and the wrong thing is to do to one another as human beings and Americans. It's more about um, how they feel about something or what rhetoric is created. Oh, yeah. You, you, have, you have fucking safe spaces and colleges yeah. with freaking puppies and coloring books. Like, how the fuck? Here's a question. I just thought of it. I heard it on radio today, and it just popped in my head. They consider we, we we know we all know what the greatest generation is, right? The the generation that fought World War Two. Yeah, they absolutely. grew up they grew up during the depression, and then end up having to fight in World War Two. Yeah. Let me pose this question to you guys, and I want every single one of you guys to answer. Rob, you go first. You're our special guest. Uh, Chris, and then George, in that order. If we were to get into a knockdown dragout, it don't get into the semantics of why or whatever, but we're going to knock down a drag out fight with, say, Russia or China, and it was nasty, and we yeah. had to draft. We've got volunteers. We've got a very strong volunteer military, which I'm very proud of. We're all, you know, George, uh, Chris, myself, Kateri, a lot of people, uh, everybody on VRS uh, was a volunteer. Um if something would like to happen, a peer on peer fight where it was going to get nasty and a draft was necessary, but do you think our generation would step up? No. You don't think so, huh? No. Which generation? Be more specific. Well, I mean, you know, early, early Gen X, millennials. Well, okay, no, millennials are, no, they're not. You don't think so? Even uh, I, 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 I did, I did, I did. Not in the numbers, not in the numbers that we would have seen during World War II or Vietnam. Not, not in those same numbers. I don't believe at all. I believe that they're they're perfectly comfortable staying here and and getting on their social media and talking shit, and they're fighting a war of technology. But when it came down to actually serving and uh, laying their life down for the country, I don't believe that we would have near uh, near the volunteer. Or, or the the support of the younger generation that we would have seen back then. I'm I just a little, don't think I'm we a would. little worried about that, but I think I think that's the, what I, I fear I the think most. The, I think the volunteer thing. I think a lot of people would volunteer. I think the draft thing would be a little bit different. People forced into military, military service. Um, but I don't know, George. What do you think? Um. The millennials have, if you take a look at the, if you're talking about the same 
millennials that were in the Marine Corps that have fought in Fallujah, that fought in Majra, that fought in, you know, yeah, Helmand Province. We're talking about volunteers. That Those are volunteers. They're, those are guys who signed up to do that shit, George. We're talking about a I, I, I understand that, but I mean, we're, I mean, we're I honestly, talking about a I, civilian level, right? Yeah. If you're talking about the people that are willing to, I, I honestly, I think a lot of them would. I, I think not at the levels that they would. In, and, and let me tell you something, too. You know, the, here, here's one thing about a lot of a lot of the the I you know I'm Generation X because uh, I was born in '66. I'm the tail end of the baby boomers. But the people my age, we'd have no. I mean, I if I had to, I would I would walk back into combat tomorrow. Um, I think a lot of the people in my peer group would. Um, well, I would. I but think, I, I just don't want to go through the pain again, and it's not the pain right. of. Incoming fire, it's the pain of the ruck, it's the pain of the hike, it's the pain of bashing my knee on a rock when I'm carrying the fucking radio. Like, that's the part I don't want to do. But I would if you let me, you know what? If you you let me shoot commies, I'd sign up tomorrow. That's all you got, you know. You don't even have 